it's a punishing round, it's an effective round, but is it the best round for concealed carry? Hello everyone and welcome again to Amalmart.com where you can find real firepower online. Today we're going to continue our discussion of the 45 ACP caliber and how it relates to your concealed carry choices. For those of you that watched the last video, we talked in depth about the history of the cartridge and where its future potentially is going to go. As we all know, concealed carry weapons are an absolute monumental driving force in today's gun manufacturer. So what I've done is assemble some of the choices that a potential buyer would look to encounter at the counter and with some different sighting systems, perhaps maybe we can talk about what's the best selection for you. Before we go any further, I need to be very clear about one thing. I am not a fan of 45 ACP as a concealed carry cartridge, which we'll cover in a little bit. For those of you that missed the previous video, this, of course, is the 45 ACP developed around 1904. This is a 230 grain ball round, straight cartridge, of course, rimless. And this is 185 grain jacket hollow point from Spear. Notice 185 compared to 230. One of the reasons this round was developed in a lighter configuration is it has more kinetic energy. So you can get 230 grain jacketed hollow points, of course. Most people find for the optimization of the caliber though, related to stopping power, 185 grain is the way to go. I've never done any testing about that, which we certainly will in future videos to determine what the expansion, whether it actually retains the weight compared to 230. So we'll compare the two and see what results we actually get. Right now, I don't have a lot of practical data for you. 45 ACP, as soon as you say it, like we talked in the last video, everybody pictures some version of this guy. Colts 1911, once again developed by John Browning. This particular gun is very common in the concealed carry market this is what's commonly known as a commander size. This particular gun is not a true commander, which typically had 4.25 inch barrels. This one's slightly less. One of the reasons why you had a 4.25 inch barrel with the commander is guns in Canada have a, had to have a barrel length of around 70 millimeters, which made it slightly more than four. With your commander size guns, you actually still got eight rounds of capacity. This is an extremely popular size of 1911 for concealed carry. And this one, of course, has a grip activated laser we'll come back to. One of the things to consider if you're a left-handed shooter purchasing a 1911 is a lot of the controls are not ambidextrous. You will not find a left-handed slide release. You may or may not be able to find a particular model that has an ambi frame mounted safety Generally, they're not set up for left-handed people, which means you have to spend a lot of time converting the gun over as far as its operation or spend an awful lot of money on one that's truly left-handed. We're going to come back to this commander in a little bit, so don't forget him. Extremely popular concealed carry 45 ACP gun on the market, of course. Glocks, all Glocks are extremely popular. This happens to be a Model 30 in Gen 4. You get 10 rounds of capacity with your 45, very wide slide to accommodate the, the breadth of the cartridge, which means the front sight's easy to pick up. However, like most condensed versions of a 45, it does have a fat and short kind of feel to the handle that I think most people will find is not terribly comfortable across a broad spectrum of shooters. Glock model, fantastic gun. And then you sort of have its counterpart, or I should say its antithesis of fat and short, which is the Shield M&P 45. This one, of course, does have a red dot optic. Wonderful. I'm a big fan of those. But you'll notice, if I can turn this around, a much skinnier profile to the handle, in my opinion, much more comfortable. And the Smith & Wesson line is M&Ps are fabulous pistols. I'm a big fan of these, just not in 45 ACP for concealed carry. And here's why. People that purchase the 45 ACP and their experiences with a large frame all steel gun, once you put that guy in this guy, you're going to notice a ton of recoil. Some people claim, well, it's a soft recoil. It's not as violent as some other calibers. 
hear me clear, you're going to know this guy went off. When you condense a powerful round into a small frame, there's only one thing that's going to happen, more felt recoil to the shoot. So if you're already not handgun proficient and you try to be on one of these platforms, it's going to be a real challenge. These guns are designed to carry a lot and shot a little. Very commonly in the concealed carry world related to 1911s, you have some series of what's called a blacked out sight. Some people call them Novak sights. There's no three dots. Basically what happens is black rectangle up here fills up the notch in the rear sight. A lot of people find that to be fast for acquisition. That's a personal preference of your own. I was never a super big fan of it, but that's just the way my eyes work. Now, interestingly enough, with this particular gun, you have a grip activated laser. Earlier, we referenced that 1911s are truly not left-handed. Let me illustrate another reason why that is so. This gun, if I use a proper two thumbs forward grip on the weapon, my hands block the laser port being left-handed. It is only when the gun is operated right-handed that the laser will actually project onto the target. So something to consider, if you buy a, a right-handed gun with a laser and you're left-handed, she's probably not gonna do you a lot of good unless you're shooting the gun improperly. With the Glock series, concealed carry, this, these are factory sights, which is a rear rectangle and the very, very famous Glock front circle. One of the things to consider with this for a lot of shooters, the Glock sometimes, the way they line it up, the circle has to be halfway blue. It's kind of a confusing thing. But bear in mind, for the Glock, almost more so than any other handgun in the history of the world, there are so many accessories for this in different sites. It's absolutely amazing. There are some wonderful sites for aftermarket purchase, but I personally find the ones that come from the factory work just fine. On the Smith M&P Shield, very interesting sighting system on this weapon. You'll notice you have fiber optic red in the rear and a green fiber optic pipe in the front. Also, obviously, you have a red dot optic made from Crimson Trace. I'm a huge fan of optics, especially when it relates to concealed carry, but keep in mind, water is wet and eventually your optic will fail. Battery or something will happen to it. So you must learn to use the sights, iron sights. These co-witness through the glass, which is another nice feature. Sometimes based on the height, they don't. Sometimes based on the manufacturer, they don't. So even though I'm gonna actually shoot the shot with the optic, in the event it fails, I still have something that I can use in an emergency to line up the shot. Bear in mind, a little bit of confusion out there. I learned this when I was in sales. These actually work better in better light. There seems to be some confusion that these work awfully good or work like night sights. They in fact do not. These things are actually more glowy when there's daylight. So keep that in mind. They're not ideal in low light conditions. One other important aspect to consider is if your sights co-witness with your optic, you can actually tell at a glance how close the optic is to at least being on zero with your sights, which that doesn't mean if all of this is lined up, front sight, post, rear, and the dot, that the gun may not shoot left or right. But what it means is you can quickly sort of ascertain how far off your optic is in relation to a perfectly aligned front and rear sight. Handy feature, saves you time and money at the range. All you have to do is get the tool and tune the optic so it's in line with the sights. Great feature to consider. The other day, when I was gathering materials for this video, I stumbled upon an excellent video done from Wilson Combat, where Bill Wilson and Ken Hackathorn were having a conversation about what guns they actually carry. And I thought it was so interesting that these two died in the wool, 45 ACP fans both stated that the gun they most often carry is a 1911 commander size, but in nine millimeter. We'll put a link onto that video so you guys can watch it. I highly encourage you to do so. It's informative, wonderful video if you're on the fence about a concealed carry caliber. The reason why both of them converted, so to speak, to the nine millimeter in that frame, twofold. One, the gun is inherently more shootable. You get quicker follow-up shots with a nine 
based on the size than you do any other caliber. And I thought this was interesting too. Ken Hackathorn actually stated that it doesn't beat his hands up so much. The 45 back to the felt recoil in a small gun is absolutely punishing. And in older aging hands like mine, believe me, that's important. You cannot spend all day on the range or even an hour on the range shooting a small gun with a 45 and come away from it feeling like you had a pleasurable experience. That just doesn't happen. It's a punishing round. It's an effective round. But is it the best round for concealed carry? I would say for a very limited few, perhaps it might be. But every one of these models is available in 9mm. So give that some thought before you proceed. And the inherent cost and lack of availability in 45 ACP make it a not very desirable purchase in my mind. If I decided that the main reason why I was going to go away from 9mm was more power, 40 or 10mm has more power than 45 ACP. There's a reason why the Alaskan State Troopers are actually issued Glock Model 20s in 10 millimeters versus compared to the Glock 21 and 45 ACP. So if power is your main consideration, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that 45 ACP would be the choice that you would make. 40 Smith & Wesson, which combines a fast bullet with weight, sort of a marriage of nine and the 45, could be a better choice. Ultimately, if stopping power is your end say, I need it, 10 millimeter auto, absolutely the way to go. Once again, you're not gonna get out of that recoil trap, but you will in fact have more power than the 45 ACP. What makes 45 ACP past, present, and future? And it does have a future, it's always gonna be here. What it is, is the characteristics of the gun. This is a superior handgun, 45 ACP, may not be a superior cartridge for every shooter. Once again, if you get the chance, the best way to know is to shoot the guns before you buy it at any range. Usually they have rental programs and I highly encourage you guys to do that. Thank you for your time and attention. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe. Hopefully I didn't offend too many 45 ACP fans out there, but that's life. Thanks for your time.